Liberty Process. This is an instructional assembly video for the Liberty Series LL8 Progressing Cavity Pump. While repairing, disassembling, or installing any Liberty Process product, we recommend using the Operations, Maintenance, and Installations Manual and reviewing them before starting any repairs. These are available for view or downloadable at www.libertyprocess.com. These manuals contain the full information on how to properly assemble, disassemble, and safely operate your Liberty Progressive Cavity Pump. Tools required for the assembly of the Liberty Series LL8 Progressing Cavity Pump a 7 16 inch, half inch, 3 quarter inch, 7 8 inch, and 1 inch wrench, a 14 millimeter Allen key, an appropriately sized or adjustable hook spanner wrench for tightening the pump drive shaft lock nut, a hammer, a pin punch smaller in diameter than the drive shaft pins, a strap wrench, pipe wrench, or chain wrench, a tape measure, a dowel rod less than an inch in diameter, a level, pipe thread sealant, bearing grease to lubricate both ends of the connecting rod, a vise mounted to a table or stand, and an arbor press or hydraulic press. Radial and thrust grease seal installation. Put the pump bearing housing on a workbench with the side that the bearing cover will be installed on the bottom. This will expose where the radial grease seal will be installed in the top of the bearing housing. Put the radial grease seal onto the pump bearing housing in the appropriate location and gently tap into place with a dowel rod and hammer. The thrust grease seal can also be installed into the bearing cover by placing the cover on the workbench with the seal area face up. Set the seal into place on the cover and tap gently into place until the seal is flush with the cover. Bearing installation onto the pump drive shaft. While holding the pump drive shaft vertically with the keyway on the top, place the thrust bearing onto the drive shaft. Then the bearing spacer, followed by the radial bearings. The bearings and spacer are universal and can be mounted in either direction. While taking care to only put pressure on the inner race of the bearing to prevent damage, use an arbor press or hydraulic press and install the thrust bearing, spacer, and radial bearing onto the pump drive shaft all the way until it stops against the shoulder. Secure the pump drive shaft with installed bearings and spacer in a vise with the keyway facing up. Install the lock washer and lock nut. Use an appropriately sized or adjustable hook spanner wrench to tighten down the bearing lock nut. After the bearing lock nut is tight, bend over the appropriate tab on the lock nut washer to prevent the lock nut from coming loose while the pump is in service. Although not demonstrated here, please be sure to pack the bearings with bearing grease upon their installation. Failure to do so will result in bearing and pump failure. Shaft installation into pump bearing housing. For this section, you will need a friend. While the suction casing is vertical, place the packing gland and collar pin retainer into the casing before installing the drive shaft. Hold the pump drive shaft by the keyway and start to insert the shaft into the end of the housing. Be careful not to damage the radial shaft seal. Use an arbor press or hydraulic press to press the pump drive shaft all the way into the bearing housing. Make sure the pump foot is secured to the workbench. Set the bearing housing onto the support using a friend to support it on the opposite end, then add the top piece.
Install the four mounting bolts by hand. Slip the lantern ring and packing gland insert in the correct order onto the shaft through the opened end of the suction casing. The beveled edge of the packing gland insert should face the suction casing. Pump suction casing installation on the bearing housing. With the bearing housing on the support, have a friend hold the pump suction casing onto the bearing housing in the desired orientation. Then install the four mounting bolts and tighten with a one inch wrench. Place a level on top of the flange to ensure that the flange is level, then finish tightening the four mounting bolts with a three quarter inch wrench. Packing gland and key installation. Add three pieces of packing into the suction casing, alternating the cuts to prevent leakage. Install the two packing gland studs by screwing them into the threaded holes on the sides of the suction casing. Tighten the packing gland nuts onto the two packing gland studs using a 3 quarter inch wrench. Install the bearing cover onto the end of the bearing housing. Tighten down the four retaining bolts with a three quarter inch wrench. Install the key into the keyway using a rubber mallet or hammer and dowel. Take care not to damage the pump drive shaft or key. Mounting the pump rotor onto the connecting rod. Put the rotor into a vise and hold it while you install the connecting rod. Install the two rubber connecting rod washers onto each end of the connecting rod. Lubricate each end of the connecting rod and the inside of the rotor head with bearing grease. Insert the end of the connecting rod into the rotor head. Push the rotor pin into the hole in the rotor head and line up with the hole in the connecting rod. Gently tap with a hammer until the pin is all the way in and flush on both ends with the rotor head. Place the rotor pin retaining band onto the head of the rotor. Using an arbor press or hydraulic press, press the rotor into the rotor pin retaining band until the pin is completely covered, ideally sitting the pin in the middle of the rotor pin retaining band and leaving space between the retaining band and the shoulder of the rotor head. Do not press the rotor pin retaining band all the way onto the rotor head until it hits the shoulder as this will make the retaining band difficult to remove. Rotor Stator Installation Install the rotor and conrod assembly into the open end of the suction casing.
Insert the drive pin and tap in with a hammer and punch until the pin is flush on both sides of the drive shaft. Install the two connecting rod washers on both sides of the drive pin in the shaft. Slip the collar pin retainer over the drive shaft pin, making sure that the holes in the collar pin retainer are lined up with the connecting rod washers. Screw in the drive pin retaining screws and tighten down with a 14mm Allen wrench. Be sure to tighten both sides evenly. Lubricate the insides of the stator and rotor with liquid soap. Using a strap wrench if necessary, screw the stator onto the rotor. Before threading the stator into the suction casing, put pipe thread sealer onto the threads of the stator to be sure the stator threads will not leak during pump usage. Using a strap wrench or a chain wrench, finish threading the stator onto the suction casing until it is tight. Stator support installation and pump alignment. Add the bottom of the stator support to the stator. Put pipe thread sealer onto the threads of the other end of the stator to be sure the stator threads will not leak during pump usage. Thread the pump discharge adapter onto the pump stator. Tighten with a strap wrench or a chain wrench. Using a tape measure, make sure the length from the center of the pump casing flange to the end of the pump adapter is the recommended distance for your specific stage LL8 pump. You can find all recommended lengths on your LL8 pump drawing or by going to our website at www.libertyprocess.com and downloading the appropriate manuals. Add the top of the stator support and install the four mounting bolts by hand. Using a tape measure, now make sure that the length from the end of the adapter to the anchor hole in the stator support is the recommended distance for your specific stage LL8 pump. Now, finish tightening the four mounting bolts using a 3 quarter inch wrench. Install all five suction casing drain plugs using a 7 8 and half inch wrench respectively. Make sure to apply thread sealer to prevent leakage during use. Install the grease port plug using a 7 16 inch wrench. Your pump is now completely assembled and should be leak tested using water to check the seal for leakage. If no leaks are present, the pump can now be reinstalled into the pump system. Feel free to celebrate accordingly. If you have any questions about or require spare parts for the repair of your Liberty Process LL8 progressive cavity pump, please feel free to contact us at www.libertyprocess.com. We always have complete pumps and all spare parts in our inventory ready to ship the same day.